My lord, what is my offense to be stopped from entering the kingdom of God? I have served you all my life and won a lot of souls for you. In fact, my church is second to the largest on earth. I deserve a crown and a very big welcome, not this. Look, is he one of those souls you have won for me? Fire is burning me. I am thirsty. What is he doing in hell? So finally, brother Peter ends up in hell. But my lord, it has nothing to do with me. He is a lost sheep. He refuses to heed the truth and warnings I gave him, and while he was on earth, he never listened to me or the word of God. He chose earthly pleasure over heaven. He is a stubborn type. I am not surprised he ends up in hell. And they... Oh God, have mercy on me. The pain is too much. I need a second chance. Please God. Even Sister Joy. What are they doing in hell? They are my members. They are part of the souls I want for Christ. I preach nothing but the undiluted word of God to them. I told them nothing but the truth. I told them that no sinner shall inherit the kingdom of God. They know the truth. As they fail after knowing the truth, should I be held accountable? Have you asked or care to know why they fail? In John 21 verses 15 to 25, when Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? He said yes. What did Jesus tell him? He said, Feed my sheep. How then do you allow the sheep handed over to you to wander away because you refuse to feed them physically? My Lord, I do not understand. How else am I supposed to feed them, if not by preaching the word of God to them, which I did? Bring the full tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Malachi 3, verse 10. I commanded my house to be filled with food for my sheep so that they would not wander away out of hunger. But you left my house empty and starved my sheep, and many wandered away and perished, and those that remain are filled with bitterness instead of love. The tithe and offering are not for you alone. They are to feed my sheep. My house shouldn't be left empty. There shouldn't be anyone hungry in my house. Who did I die for? Is it the building or my sheep? Who did I ask you to take care of? Was it the private jet or my sheep? Who am I coming back for? Is it the cars, the buildings, or my sheep? Whose footsteps are you following? What? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, what is happening? I notice many of our members are no longer coming, including Brother Peter and Sister Joy, who were so devoted. Brother Larry. Yes, Pastor. Please, do you have any idea why Brother Peter and others stopped coming to church? Not at all, Pastor. I have no idea. Didn't you visit him the day I asked you to visit him? Pastor I did, but none of them agreed to give me a listening ear, especially, Brother Peter. You needed to see the way Brother Peter walked out on me, as if he didn't know me. That is unlike him. All right, Brother Paul. Yes, Pastor. Please go to Brother Peter's house and find out why he is no longer coming to church. Encourage him and make him aware that he needs God's presence always. Okay, sir and Sister Grace visit Sister Joy and find out why she is not coming again. I mean, we are in the last minutes. No one should allow the devil or the things of the world to distract him or her. As we speak, anything can happen at any time. I repeat, this is the time when we should be more serious than before. As soon as we close today's meeting, take this message to them. Okay, sir. Praise the Lord. Is that me, Brother Peter? I hope we reach there on time. I am sure they are at home, so relax. Brother Peter, excuse me. Peter, who is he? He is my church member. Go and answer him. He is following us. To be honest with you, I don't even want any disturbance from them. They should leave me alone. Let me focus, please. They are not feeding me or caring about how I fed, so I don't see any reason why they should be disturbing me anytime I do not go to church. Brother Peter, pastor sent me to you. Please wait. Answer him first. You never know why he is calling you. Who told you? I don't know why he is calling me. There is nothing he has to offer me apart from Peter. We are no longer seeing you again. What happened? Please don't neglect the gathering of the saints. Pastor sent my regard to you. That is all. All right, but at least give him a listening ear and be sure of what he wants. No problem, let alone me. I will ignore all of them until they are tired of asking of me, but because you say I should hear him out, 
Let me just give him two minutes. Wait for me. Go on. Yes, Brother Paul, you are calling me. Brother Peter, good afternoon. What happened? Our pastor sent Brother Larry to come and check on you, and you refused to see him. I hope there is no problem. No problem, apart from difficulty. You know, ever since I lost my job, I have had no means of feeding. I had to do everything possible to find food to eat, so I no longer have that time to be regular like before. If it is only for hunger, it means you don't have a problem, and I know God will never allow any problem to locate you. He is faithful to those who trust in Him. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 Says that no temptation has taken you but such as is common to man. God is faithful and will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And 2 Timothy 2 verse 13 Says that even if we are faithless, He remains faithful, for He cannot disown Himself. You can see how much God cares for us. So, my brother, I want you to continue coming to church the way you used to. Don't give the devil a chance to distract you. I heard you. Thank you very much. I want to use this opportunity to let you know that we have activity on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and I want you to be there. Nonsense. Brother Peter. Did I say anything wrong? Let us continue our journey, please. But Peter, why do you walk out of him like that? You never allow him to finish. That is because I am sick and tired of hearing the same sermons, and that is not what I need now because I already know them. What I need is help, not Bible verses and church activities. The time to use that to encourage has passed. If they are following the foundation the Apostle laid for us, they should know that the time of quoting and preaching the Bible to backsliders in order to encourage them has passed. This is the time to enter into people's problems and solve the ones they can. You cannot tell someone who is hungry to come to church with an empty stomach. Even if they manage to come, they will be absent-minded. The word of God will not germinate in their hearts. And this is why the church is filled with bitterness. There is no love among the children of God. And if nothing is done about it, I am afraid many will fall. You are right, Peter, but it is not his fault. He is just a fellow brother in Christ, and you shouldn't put your anger on him. Please, I have a lot to think of. I have no time for that now. Brother Paul. Thank God I met you here, Pastor. I am just coming back from Brother Peter's, as you instructed. I met him on my way to his house. I hope he responded after you encouraged him. Although he gave me a listening ear at the beginning, when I immediately reminded him to have church activities with us, he got angry and walked out on me. In fact, I was surprised. He doesn't even want to hear. Come to church activity. That's all right, I will go meet him myself tomorrow and find out what the problem is. All right, Pastor, I will go home now. Pastor, you are here. Yes, Brother Peter, can I enter inside? No, Pastor, as you can see, I was about to go out already before you came. I am running late. Please say whatever it is you want to say. I am listening. Brother Peter, what is the problem? Why do you want to turn your back on God? Why have you refused to give God your time? See, the end is at hand. This is not the time to backslide, as you can see the scripture is fulfilled, meaning anything can happen at any time, as you can see the signs are everywhere. 2 Timothy, 3 verses 1 to 5. But understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. When you look at the world we are in today, you don't need anyone to tell you it is time. 2 Peter 3 verses 10 to 13. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. 
you see why you need to hold on to God till the end. Please return to God. What you say is true, Pastor, but if I don't go to work every day, I will not be able to eat, and you don't expect me to carry an empty stomach to church and return home only to stay hungry. It is not possible, so I had to go and hustle for what to eat. A hungry man is an angry man. But that shouldn't stop you from coming to church as usual. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? Remember, just as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all, so will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Luke 17 verses 26 to 30. Don't allow anything to take you away from God. Learn to manage your time. Enough pastor. Don't act as if you care, whereas you don't. All you care for is to have a large congregation. Do you even consider what we the poor go through just to see food to eat? During the time of the apostles, it was not so. There was no one hungry in the house of God. They eat together, laugh together, and face challenges together. They care so much about the poor. Because of the poor, the rich among them sold their land and brought it to the house of God as a tithe and offering, and the money was used for the poor and gospel purposes. And there was so much love and joy in their hearts that made them grow mightily, but now it is no longer so. Tithes and offerings are now for the building and church founders alone. They live in luxury while a lot live in pain and poverty, so tell me, what love is there? What is the joy of gathering together the saints, if it is all about? To your tent, O Israel? See pastor. I am not happy, and a lot of people like me are not happy. What is being displayed now as a church is not the foundation the apostles laid for us to follow. So pastor, don't tell me how to manage my time, because you don't know what I am going through. Allow me to use it the way I like. It is not as if you care for our well-being. Brother Peter I can see that you have allowed the devil to capture your heart. Don't you know that what you are doing is what the devil wants? If you are hungry, why not ask? You will see a brother who will volunteer to help you. For how long will I continue like that, Pastor? How long will I keep begging one brethren to another to help me when God has organized everything the way it should be and you people refuse to follow the will of God to his children? Don't you know that God cares for our souls more than anything else? And Jesus cares for the souls, not the buildings here and there. Jesus cares for the souls, not the cars here and there. Jesus cares for the soul, not the private jet in the name you are after. So, whose footstep are you following? As far as I am concerned, you are not following in the footsteps of my Savior, Jesus. The apostles never allowed anyone to lack during their time. If it has been like that, stealing will reduce, and the love of God will increase. Evil will be reduced, and everyone will love to worship God. The pursuit of worldliness will reduce, and souls will increase in the house of God. Hatred, jealousy, and envy that have filled the church today will reduce the love of God, and the Spirit of God will dwell in the church, making it difficult for witches, wizards, and cultists that have filled the church today to penetrate. How then do you preach to me against worldliness? When you display it in its highest form, and make those who are not interested in it begin to dream of it. You move around with a bulletproof car and so many securities protecting you. Is God not able to protect you? You live in a mansion with so many servants, you own a private jet, and you claim it is for missionaries, while there is someone who cries to God every day just for food in your church. You own property up and down. I thought you said there's heaven and that we should not lay treasure on earth. Why are you laying treasure on earth? Don't you want to go to heaven? Or you don't like heaven? Then you turn around and tell me to smile in my pain while you are not in pain. How many people that are sitting in the church do you think are really Christians? Just a few others are just there and are still living in sin. Why? Because the love and fear of God are not being displayed, which is why the heart is being filled with wickedness instead of the love of God. And you are busy pursuing more members, whereas the ones you have are not saved. Save the ones you already have. Others will follow. And listen. Never ask for my time again. You are not feeding me. For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? 1 Peter 4 verses 17. 
Excuse me. Oh no, oh no, Satan is at work. He has turned Peter into a rebellious son. We need to start an urgent prayer meeting. Peter I overheard your conversation with your pastor. What about it? Please speak. I don't want you to take my time. I have an important place to go. You might be right, but the way you are acting is not right. You don't use wrong to correct wrong. You should focus and ask God to provide for you. That the church doesn't care about you shouldn't make you forsake God. After all, it is God you are serving, not humans, and it is God that will reward you. If you turn your back on God, remember, when you miss heaven, you cannot miss hell, so stay focused. Stop all those negative thoughts about the church not caring for the poor. Therefore, you decided not to serve God again. Remember, we are talking about your soul and there is no excuse for sin. Don't allow anything to make you miss heaven. It is better to suffer on earth and make heaven than to suffer on earth and still lose heaven and enter eternal suffering. Leave them for God to judge and save your own soul. Is that why you stopped me? Nonsense. What is all this? All they care about is, come to church without caring how the poor among them feel. Is it not when someone eats that he will have the strength to go to church? Peter, you look so angry. What is the problem? Don't mind that, pastor. They don't care for the well-being of the poor, and yet they want to take all our time. Who does that? I am tired of listening to them preach because that doesn't solve my problem, and I have decided never to allow any of them close to me. As long as I am concerned, I am ready to do anything to help myself to at least eat well. Now you are talking. If you had listened to me for a long time when I told you to stop allowing them to take all your time, by now you would have made enough money. In fact, I am ready to do anything now. Those people are not helping anyone. When you tell them you are hungry, they will start preaching to you. I don't know whether it is preaching and Bible verses I will eat or used to help my family. See, forget about them. Let me take you where you will go and make money very fast. Please, I am all yours. Brethren, pray. Something is happening, which is why we need to pray. Satan is trying to pull some of our members down. So let us pray against every plan of Satan to scatter our members. Anything he is using to distract the children of God. Let's ask God to scatter his plan against any of our members. Shall we pray? Oh God, uproot and scatter. Children of God, pray and ask God to return all our members. Satan cannot have them. I told you you were wasting your time following these church people. They have nothing to offer you. Now watch your life turn around. My guy. I appreciate Hey, stop there. Peter, they are my guy. Wait here, let me tell them about you. No problem. Tell them I can do anything as long as money is involved. My guys, I brought a new member for us, and he'll deliver well. Are you sure he is capable? Because I don't want babies here. I am sure of what I am saying. There is nothing he can't do. If you doubt me, Put him to the test, and he will prove it to you. Then he has to pass the test. I will put him in first before I approve him as one of our members. No problem. Peter, our leader, would like to meet you, come forward. Alright. Sir, I am here, sir. Are you sure you have the heart to mingle with us? Yes, sir, I can do anything. Trust me, I have the heart. Then, to be sure, I want you to go out there be it in my market or on the street. I don't care where you do it. All I care about is for you to steal someone's wallet and bring it to me. If you can do this, then you are one of us. That is not a problem at all. In fact, if you like, I can make it two or three wallets. Listen, if you are caught, you must die in silence. Is that clear? I will never be caught. Just watch me come back. I need a change, please. Enough of holiness that does not bring food to the table. Madam, please bring three mats for me. This is it. That man's wallet must be full of money. Let me go and get it. Hey, stop there and hand over your wallet to me right now. Who are you, and what do you want to do with my wallet? Thief. Thief. Someone come and help. Where is the thief? Where is the thief? That man over there has taken my wallet. So you are a thief. Please, I am sorry. 
I have dropped the wallet. Shut up, thief. You will die here. I am sorry. I am sorry. Shut up. My heart. My heart. Good. In your next life, you won't steal again. Sister Joy, I am happy to see you today. But why are you rushing home? You know, our pastor said, we should wait after church. I am sorry, but I need to go. I have a place to go, and it's urgent and very important. Maybe some other time I will wait. No problem, just take care of yourself. I will. Not only wait, I should also leave my side hustle, because you are going to give me food after waiting. What am I going to hear with an empty stomach that I have not heard before? Please, I am going to look for food to eat. My sugar daddy, I am here. What keeps you so long? I have been waiting. I am here now. Shall we begin? Now move to bed. I can't wait to have you. Sure. Rest in peace, and thanks for being my sacrifice. I cannot stand it anymore. Of what use am I living if I cannot even eat ordinary food? I have to end this life. I am tired. Thank you, God, for answering our prayer. I know you will bring back all the backsliders. Be thou glorified. Yeah. Oh no. Jesus said to him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell what thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Matthew 19, verse 21. And one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed, and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body? What use is that? James 2, verse 16. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him, and said, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now for three days, and have nothing to eat, and I will not send them away fasting, lest they faint in the way. Jesus shows the example, and the apostles carry it on. Matthew 15 verse 32. For there was not a needy person among them, for all who were owners of land or houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet, and they would be distributed to each as any had need. Acts 4 verse 34 to 35. Whose footsteps are you following? Oh no. Is this a dream or what? So Peter was right. Oh no. I have lost a lot of souls already. No more. Pastor, you came back. How much do we realize in tithes and offerings that are still available? Sir, we have about $20,000. Listen, use $15,000 to buy rice, beans, yam, gary, and, in fact, all the food items. Buy as much as you can. And announce to the church that anyone who cannot afford food should stop and collect food. Sir, is anything the matter? I thought we had agreed to use the money to complete our next building. Jesus died, cared, and is coming back for the souls, not the buildings. Of what use are the buildings here and there if, at the end, none are saved? What? Praise the Lord. Please, if you are here and you know you have nothing to eat or cannot afford food to eat, Make sure you meet with church welfare to collect food before you go. Thank you, God. And this is how it should be from now on until Jesus returns. Listen, if you are a rich person who gives tithes in the church and there is a poor person in that church, please give the tithe to that poor person. God will appreciate it more. Just pray, Father. I want to give my tithe to this poor person, that's all. One who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his good deed. Proverbs 19, verse 17 The tithe and offering are for the house of God to be filled with meat, which is food, and that meat or food is for the poor. God showed so much value and care for the poor, to the point that he commanded tithes and offerings. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. This is the main reason, then he continues. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Malachi 3, verses 8 to 10. We give tithes and offerings, and nothing changes in our lives, because they are not used properly. 
God doesn't want anyone in his house to go hungry. He cherishes the poor so much. If there is food in the house of God, as he commanded, who will it go to? Of course, the poor and the workers. I don't know why that part of the verse is being neglected. There should be adequate provision in all churches for the poor. The tithe and offering are not made for building or anything else but for food in the house of God. If the church wants to build, they should ask for the money separately. We should stop deceiving ourselves and care for the souls that are most important. Give your tithe and offering to the poor person around you, and stop giving it to a founder who rides with 100 security, lives in a mansion, and when he moves, it is like the president is moving. The foundation the apostles laid for us is not so. The tithe and offerings in their time were used to solve people's problems. They shared them according to needs. Why is it not so now? The church is made for souls, not souls for the church. And the church is the soul, not the building. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe, like, and share. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you.